meat you can give up. And if you can't give it up, they've gone to someone or ones, plural, that will give it up. Are you listening? If anybody's offended from this teaching, it's because you're guilty. Are you listening? Amen. You see, when you come into God's house, this house, God's house, don't look for no Joel Alstein ism. Don't look for no Creflo O'Dollar ism. Don't look for Jake the Snake ism. Don't look for no Tyler Perry ism. The moment you drive down Fifth Street, it ought to come to your mind. Bible, 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 Bible. That's all. That's all you get here. Here, I don't care who you are. I don't care where you come from. I have no interest in your celebrity status or your position. You born of a woman like I am. You will soon go the way of all flesh. You will turn to dust. It's either God's way or no way. So you young men who just having a good time making babies. And you women who's only interested in getting checks from the government because of your babies. Talk back to me. Leave these pants hanging dirty two-legged street dogs alone and get some self-dignity and respect in yourself. Am I right, folks? Talk back to me. Sex don't make you a woman. And it don't make you a man. Old school teaching is keep your virginity till you get married. Am I right, I said? You fathers ought to go back to that teaching to your daughters. How can you tell your daughters to keep your virginity till you get married when your girlfriend is sleeping in the house? She waking up to different women in your house. What can you tell your daughter? Can't tell her nothing. Are you listening? Mothers can't tell their sons anything. If there's just as many bad men in your bed as it is ticks on the back of a dog's back. Am I right? I want to hit you hard. Listen and view us. Nevertheless, you mothers and you fathers. Some of this, not all, some of it is your fault. You have ceased to be examples at home. You let your children smoke and party and cuss in your house. You have no rules at home. You have no laws at home. You let your girls wear anything. A skirt about this big, a blouse about this big, and she can cuss you out and you her mama. You too busy trying to be a big sister. This girl need a mother. You mothers are trying to be good big sisters. And you fathers that's trying to be a friend to your son. Let me show you what you do wrong. The moment you put sister in the title, 
your daughter gonna bring different forms of respect. So your daughter may go word for word with her sister, but she need to know she cannot go word for word with her mother. You understand? Boys may go word for word with their friend in the street. I know I did, man, we was in the hood. We go word for word and another one said, all right, look, let's have a fair one. I'm, all right, let's go ahead. <clears throat> you let me try that with my pop. You let me try that with my pop. My, slap, my pop will slap me back to babyhood. I'll be like, <laughs> do you understand? Years ago, there used to be a saying, I wear the pants in the house, and we knew who was the father. But now you men want to wear the dresses in the house. There is no father. So society is falling apart like the scripture says it would. The preachers have went to sleep. Someone wrote me and said, why is it that men are not preaching what you're preaching? Simple, you making them rich. You keep giving a child candy. You do good if you have any problems out that child. You people have spoiled your pastor. You buy his house, you buy his cars, you pay his rent, you pay his mortgage, gas, electric, you buy his clothing, you send all his children to the best schools in the, in, in, in the community. That man ain't gonna bother you. He feels as though he cannot afford to preach against your sins. So look at your house, you that are watching, you parents, and you that are here. Look how naked you allow your daughters to run the street. These skin tight pants what shows your flesh. They look like they're naked out in the street. Ankle chains on, wearing the label of a whore. You're not a whore, take it off. You men let your wives walk the streets like a thought. That hoe over there. You let her come out, breasts hanging out. You let her come out, her backside hanging out. And then you ready to fight or shoot or cut some other man who's looking at your wife. Then you shouldn't have let your wife come out like that. You know the nature of a man is to look at a woman's meat. Well, Pastor Jenny, you don't understand. You look at my wife's body, man, she's built. I got a trophy wife. Let me tell you something, brother. No woman should wear the title trophy. It's too cheap. If all you got is a trophy, you ain't got nothing. Because trophies fall apart. But if you have a help me, like God made her to be, then you got something worthwhile. My young brothers and sisters, who's not married, do you even know what to look for? See, the scriptures teaches us that the men have to take care of his family. Responsible man don't mind. When my wife and I concluded we gonna marry, well, I didn't get on my knees like a lot of men do. They would ask her, would you marry me? I sat in my living room, my mother's house. And she sat in the living room. I said, now look, we getting married. I mean, I just kept it real, you know. She knew I wanted her, and I knew she wanted me. A little need for me to ask her, will you marry me? 
I just told her, hey, look, we're getting married. But then I put one stipulation. I said, if you don't want God, the only wedding bells you hear is when the good humor ice cream man come up your street. You want to know how to love your wife? Look at how God loved the church. Are you listening? My young brothers and sisters, is everybody listening? You that are not married, what kind of marriage do you want? You that's looking for, you know, this woman who have a big gown, he have a tux and flower girls and all that mess, and you spend all this money for a relationship that probably won't last three months. All that is for show. Pastor Jenny, did you have that? Hey, listen, we didn't have no bridal party. Hey, we didn't need all that stuff. Why? Only she and I was getting married. I didn't need no bridal party. I ain't need no best man. I ain't need none of that. Get your car. Come to the church. Let your brother walk you down the aisle. The Bible speaks against the wearing of jewelry, so therefore I didn't need no ring, so that saved me money. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Don't worry about no ring on her finger. Let me be on her finger. Don't need no ring. So... When my father performed the wedding, church was packed. Yeah. I mean, packed like it's a convention. Yeah. I was like, wait a minute. It's, it's just too many people. They just let them come and see us get married and eat and leave. We got to bring some gospel here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that was my thinking. I'm like, wait a minute, you just gonna come here and see us get married, eat up all this food and then leave? No, you got a price to pay. <laughs> My wife said, Gino, you really gonna preach? I said, yeah. My mother-in-law came to me, Gino, isn't this one day you can't preach? She said, think about it. I said, all right. I'm done, I thought about it. I said, I'm going in. The word of the Lord fits every gathering. And people most time come for wedding and funerals. Starting of a new life and the ending of one. Brothers and sisters that are not married, what are you looking for? If you're not willing and not ready to stop your street behavior, don't marry him or her and mess up their life. You can be miserable by yourself. You don't marry a man because the car he drives, his height, his complexion, his outdated cologne. <laughs> Are you listening? What are you looking for? Do you know what to look for? Oh, he got to be making at least 100000 a year. Do you, oh, what about loving him? Oh, that time will come. What? Now it's so backward. He will say, oh, she got to bring at least 75000 to the table. Wait a minute. So what are you marrying for? For love or for money? Pastor Jennings, what should I look for first? The same belief in God. First and foremost. The same belief in God. First and foremost. That's your foundation before love. Good teaching. Are you listening to me? He believed one thing, she believed another. Who you think will be in the middle as victims? Your children. Here was a Baptist marrying a Methodist. 
and a Catholic being born. How can you and him believe the same thing about God if neither one of you have been informed, have been taught? So the first thing you should want to know, your belief in God. How sincere is it? Is he or she committed? You must be committed to God more than you committed to her because your commitment to God will make you committed to her and to him. She or he may question you about your commitment to him in years come and she may question you about your commitment to her years to come. Listen, if you're committed to God, you're going to be committed to each other. Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah. First, God. Secondly, have you repented and been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, which is an obedient act towards what God requires? Right. I'm teaching you to put God first before you get that man and get that woman. See, some of you want the man and the woman so bad until you start out wanting God and then when you get that man and get that woman, you don't want God as much no more because now he or she become a distraction. Here you want to live your whole life serving God, but he ain't ready, so he wants you to party with him. Hang out at the club with him. Hang out with his friends. And here's this the thing. You're trying to get away from that lifestyle. And he's trying to pull you into that lifestyle. You have all that to consider. How can you get sweet and bitter water from the same fountain? What if God says what? First Corinthians chapter 7 and that verse 2. Says. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. To avoid Fornication. Let every man have his own wife. It ain't no such thing. Try it before you buy it. Did you hear me? Yes. What's try it before you buy it, Pastor Jennings? Have sex before you get that license. Then you can know whether you really want to be with her or really be with him. Think of it. Look how loose that sound. How in the world did sex determine that's the man for you or that's the woman for you because she can knock you up upside down a prostitute can do that how would he do to you determine he's the one to marry a man in the street can do that so sex is not a foundation of no relationship and you blind folk need to stop making fornication a foundation of your love. If sex is the foundation of anybody's relationship, that relationship will not last. Because you're going to meet some man or meet some woman that will introduce something to you. Am I right? I said, I'm telling you, you're going to think you're one of the village people. Somebody knows something a little bit more than you know. Am I right? I said, you experienced folks. Talk back to me. Then you that don't have no experience, you wouldn't understand. The experienced man that come by, you will think that's E.T. cousin, because he will take you to the moon. Experienced woman, done with you, have you sing in a high-pitched voice like Tiny Tim. Tiptoes do the toes. <laughs> Are you listening? <laughs> Are you listening to what I'm talking? So please, don't let fornication, sex, 
be the foundation or the reason you want to marry him or you want to marry her. The Bible said, how can two walk together except they agree? If my wife believe in three distinct persons in the Godhead and I believe there's only one in the Godhead, we ain't going to get along. If my wife is trying to be some church evangelist somewhere and I looked at the Bible that says I suffer not a woman to teach nor the use of authority over the man but to be in silence with all subjection and she keep trying to preach, we ain't going to get along. It's in importance that you both believe the same thing first. Before you share the same bed. Are you listening? Amen. What did he say? Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. And let every woman have her own husband. Your own. It didn't say every man have his own man. Let every man have his own wife. It didn't wife. say let every man marry his own man and every woman marry her own woman. It didn't say that. I said it did not say that. Let every man have his own wife. I want this to be good in case I got any men on the down low here. You're welcome to come. We're not going to put you out. You're welcome to come. But I'm going to burn your bitches with Bible good until that homosexual demon come out of you. Are you listening? See, they hear me preach like this. Man, you see, where is love? Here it is. Love is truth. That man don't love you when he tells two men you can get married. He don't love you. But when he uphold God's law, that's love. Wonderful. Are you listening? Amen. Mothers and fathers, your house need to be renovated. Nice. Go back to being a father. Go back to being a mother. Be careful how you treat your own mother and father because you may be a father one day and a mother one day. And now it becomes your responsibility to teach your children what they should and should not do. Are you listening? Amen. Stop letting your son's girlfriend spend the night over your house. Should be rules in your house. See, when I came up, you let a girl come in our house. She may have been a sinner. My parents knew she was a sinner. But if you came over and you wasn't barely dressed, my mother pulled you to the side. Young lady, who's your parents? Yes, right. Yes, right. Uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Black. Okay. They let you come out and dress like that? I'm not trying to embarrass you, but if you come in my house, have some clothes on. That's right. Now, this is what the modern parents will say. I'm not trying to judge. I ain't about judge. It's simply you don't want no half naked girl in your house. It ain't about judging. It's about home decency, self respect. That's what it's about home decency, self respect. And this is what we're trying to bring the world back to. Wonderful, wonderful. You too, young brothers. You walk around with your pants hanging down like you some type of kangaroo. Think of it. Why would looking untamed be popular. You know, when I came up, our parents taught us, you even dress a certain way going to an interview. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, yeah, in fact, your parents will look you over, all right? No, 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 put your, put your pants down to your shirt. They'll tell you, put your shirt down to your pants, rather. Put your pants, now, they have their pants out, shirt out, pants hanging, and throw a necktie on. And then go inside the office, and then the guy says, so, tell us, Mr. Gillicuddy, why should we hire you today? He's like, yo, 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 dog, yo, dog, wait, 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 yo. Wait. You haven't spoke a complete sentence yet. Your word was, yo, 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 dog. He's not a dog. And yo, yo is just not part of your, should not be part of your vocabulary. Because when you deal with people, it's no yo, yo. So this is what you do. Yo, 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 dog. Hey, look, you see what I'm saying? You know, I do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You know, I know I'm the guy for the job, homeboy. You know, you see what I'm saying? You see, you see this is what you see what I'm saying? We see what I'm saying? Wait a minute. How is he going to see what you saying and you ain't said nothing? Look how the young people have gotten. When the elderly try to correct you, look how filthy and disrespectful your mouths are to them. A elderly man or woman will walk off the street, you laugh at him or her. You better pray you even get their age. How can you be a mother or a father if you're drunk every day? High every day. Your children got to pull you out the club, out the bar. Your children have to take the needle out of your arms. Your children smoking from your cigarettes, your six pack of beer. Children learn how to smoke in your house. Children learn how to get high in your house. Your son's first sex was from your girlfriend and you his father. This is the downfall of so-called Christianity. I say so-called because there's nowhere in the Bible where Jesus said he started Christianity. Jesus taught us, be holy. See, you so-called folk that's in that religion of Christianity, that's why you're so wild. You ain't born again. You's a wild, loud, cussing, drinking, partying thing in the name. All them folk on New Year's Eve in that fake church who said they turned their church to a club, they all claimed they was born again Christians, including the pastor. But the pastor's right there. <laughs> this is what they call church. But when you say holy, oh, it's a different rule that's implemented. It's a different standard. No more smoking now. In-house, out-house at all. No more drinking, no more. No more living together, not married. No more, no more racism. No more prejudice. No more with your pants hanging down. Men don't have their hair long like women. Men ain't wearing a ponytail, a man bun. Long hair, tight pants, shirt open like you feminine. Bible says if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. And this shows you that many today have never been in Christ because there's nothing new about them. Do you hear what the word of God says? Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. To avoid 
fornication. Let every man have his own wife. Let every man have his own wife. And let every woman have her own husband. Let every woman have her own husband. Let the husband render unto the wife. Look at this. Do benevolence. That means honor her. Respect her. So you're not putting your hands on her and beating her. Hear me good? Hear me good? The Bible said, let the man render unto the wife. Render to the wife. Do benevolence. Honor. I don't mean you and your wife ain't going to have no disagreement. Sometimes you may have to tell her, hey, hey, look now, look, 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 let's be quiet. Let's, let's, let's be quiet now. You ain't cussing me out. Not in my house. You ain't cussing me out. You better bring that tongue on and under subjection here. You don't grab her like you do a man and shove her up against the wall. Because today's women ain't letting you do it. Am I right, I said? That's right. No, you go grab some woman today. She going to go down in the cedar closet where there's about 10,000 mothballs. And what she pull out going to have you running running down the street. So it doesn't matter how heated your argument get, one, there should never be no profanity. That's right. Good teaching. Good teaching. Someone say, is it wrong to get angry? No. The Lord says, be ye angry, but sin not. So your anger should not push you to sin. You cuss him out. He cuss you out. She call you, are you mother? You son of a... 